Alright everybody, so it's been a little bit since I put a video up, been a few days, a couple days I think. Um, today we're going to show you everything that's wrong with the $600 E39, which is funny because usually it's also what's wrong with the $3000 E39. A lot of people don't understand, most of these cars have the same issues, most of these issues are not due to the car's fault. They are previous, usually previous shop uh, mess ups or situations, so that's about it. So other news, we got some lighting we're putting up. I'm not sure I don't like this, but we're going to keep sorting that out. Maybe I'll get ones that go all the way down the whole roof. I really don't know. Let's go out to the car and take a look. Look at those beauties sitting over there. Look at that. Okay, so first things first, we'll start off with the obvious first, the factory floor mats. Factory floor mats were so bad about the foam on the back coming off. That's what was all on the carpet. And as you can see now, I probably need to leave the windows down in this thing actually. You can see now we got the driver's side carpet is not perfectly clean, but it's pretty damn good. Uh, definitely seeing worse. You can see the passenger seat is still out. We're fixing a twist on that. I noticed when I did the back seat twist, it's not perfectly aligned. So I need to take the two bolts out on the motor, run it, line it up, and just slide it back in. It should not be that big a deal. Okay, so we'll start with the inside here. We'll go with the outside. First of all, as you know from the, the first video, the paint is awesome. Uh, there's a tiny ding on the trunk, which I could probably work some of that out with my tools. Looks like somebody shoved it up on a trailer or something. It's got a little ding on the back bumper. That is really all the paint damage that's on the car. It really did turn out good. Now, I had it in the shop, we had it jacked up. I know the story on everything now. The rear upper control arms need to be replaced. It's about 30 bucks. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, also the LEDs on the cluster and on the uh, upper stereo, lower stereo I mean, uh, the OBC if you will, are a little broken up. They're about average. Uh, there's two things. Number three, all the doors are not leaking water. So this one actually could have a sunroof drain. I have not sorted that yet. It's not supposed to rain today, but it's starting to get cloudy. So I'll have to watch the weather and make sure. I'm about to put a car cover on it if it's going to rain. I don't want it all getting wet again. Uh, as far as I could tell, everything works. Sunroof works, everything works. Now, there's also no sound coming from the radio or the stereo at all. I don't know if it has a factory amp in it. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know any of that stuff. We're going to find out though. Okay. This car will need thrust arms at the minimum. We'll check into the brakes and all that stuff. Depends on what we're going to do with it, whether we do all that. I did buff the headlamps, or the headlamp, had one new one, and one, this one was all nasty, so I buffed it. Now they both match. The car looks good. It's missing a fog light. Um, this shroud, I'm going to pull the shroud off. It's all busted up, and it's a nuisance anyway. I see that as missing a, let me get in the shade here so you can see, missing a halo light. That's not a big deal. Both the headlights seem to work and function. They auto a level and that kind of stuff. Um, the rack and pinning is bad as I showed you before. The throttle body boots ripped as I showed you before. I have not pulled the disc out and checked that yet. We're probably gonna have to have coil packs by the way it's running. And right at this very minute it is not charging. So I don't know if that's a problem with the fuse box and the floor that we had to replace or what but that's not charging. So that's going to be tended to. We will do the Euro one tune on this more than likely. So we'll delete this, we'll delete the secondary air pump and the front bumper, we'll delete all four oxygen sensors. That takes a lot of equation out of it. Someone has replaced the CCV on it. So we do not have to do that. Um, but we still might take the intake off to see what's happening. Like I showed you before, there is a rip right there. There is a hole right there. I think I have that here. I'm not exactly sure. Um, let me see. Other than that, the wipers and everything seem to be okay. Probably needs any blades though, I would venture to say. Um, everything else on the inside, other than this side needs to be cleaned. The other side was worse and it came out perfect. Um, we'll snap the rest of the trim back together. I did kind of set the back seat in place and all that business. On this one, the headliner is not falling down. He has a bar for hanging shirts up in here. The headliner and all that stuff is real good shape on this. I think what we're going to do, if I keep this for a while, I'm going to take the steering wheel from my E46. It has the, the M wheel in it. 
and we will do that. Now, let's go to the trunk. Actually, before we go to the trunk, there is a, I don't know if you can even see or not, right there, the heater hose coming from, the hard pipe coming from the timing chain case on this one, loops around and goes to a push lock hose. That push lock hose is held on with glue. Now, I'm no mathematician, but that's not gonna work. Uh, also, there is something leaking up here, whether it's a thermostat or water pump, I don't know. From underneath, I could actually see coolant, some drips. Even though the coolant's not low, it's probably not a bad leak. Probably water, probably water pump more than likely. They didn't replace it with the OEM. I couldn't see the, the badge on it to see what it even was. Um, probably leaking out the bearing more than likely. So let me get the keys because the battery's dead and we'll get in the trunk. Next thing, the trunk, the keys do not unlock the trunk. <laughs> Let's see if they unlock the door. They do not unlock the door. Sweet. Somebody's changed the ignition in the car. Do you see that? It's pretty common actually on these. It'll get the ignition twist problem. And uh, what on in turn happening is um, they'll just get a different ignition and key off eBay and just swap that out. So uh, I was gonna tell you the battery terminal, the bolt's missing. I have to look and see if that's in there. Now we ran ISTA on it. It did say the fan was not working correctly. E39, you pretty much assume that is the case. The benefit of this car, the ABS module is working correctly. And as I could tell, there is not even one drip or not even one seep of oil on the manifolds. So that's pretty sweet actually. The AC does work. Bugs flying in my face. AC actually does work. Like I said, we'll have to 150,000 miles. We're gonna have to pull the shroud well and inspect that canister, all the hoses, uh, kind of see what the status of these hoses look like they've been replaced at some point or another. That's not in there right. It's probably missing a rubber thing on the bottom, which means that'll rub a hole in the radiator eventually. This one is also missing it. Sweet. But that's super common stuff. I'm sure every vacuum hose, every rubber hose related on this car is rotten. Uh, you can see right here. Well, somebody might have replaced that. But uh, that's the current situation. Somebody's also replaced this. I can tell that as a Chinese one. The secondary air hose. We're going to delete all that anyway. It doesn't make any difference. But for the main purposes, everything functions. Um, as far as ECU... No electronic problems really for say besides the fuse box and it's funny I just looked at those on eBay it used to be I could buy those all day long for 30 bucks now everybody's having that issue with E39s now they're like a hundred hundred and forty bucks for that little fuse box I'd like to replace it might have to do is just take it all back out uh, remove all the bolts and nuts from that and wire brush all that stuff clean Put some kind of grease on it where it's not going to corrode and do it like that i mean that's kind of worst case scenario i can do that um you know that's what we're looking at other than that in other news the e60 that thing that thing no sorry demonetize that thing the oil pan for the transmission is leaking and what the story was on that a 6 hp 19 i got actually while well, i'm sitting here Somewhere in here is that bag, and as I threw it away, that told what brand it was, that oil pan, I did throw it away, fortunately. Um, it's like a green and black bag, I forgot what the name of it was. Uh, so when I had the pan here for a while, the situation with that is, um, it's, uh, I can't set that on there, it's not big enough. The situation with, with that is, I put the oil pan in, torqued all the bolts, the 53 inch pounds, went and drove it on a 30 minute drive. It was just leaking bad, man, from the pan. Brought it back in, re, I took a ratchet instead of torque wrench, put them all where they need to be, probably a little tighter than what they need to be. Um, topped the oil back off, topped the fluid back off, drove it for another day, and it's seeping. Brought it back in yesterday. 
wiped it all off. All the bolts were loose again. Ran them all down again. And just had it jacked up in there, not running. Just left it up on jacks, right? In here. Wiped everything off. Came back an hour later. It's dripping on the floor again. It doesn't drip a lot. It was like three or four drips within an hour. It only drips when it's setting, not when you're driving because the fluid level is circulating. I'm going to have to buy a new pan for that. A legit one. Not like some Mickey Mouse, maybe China, maybe not kind of pan. I think there's two issues. I think the bolts keep stretching on it because they're Chinese bolts. And from what I read, those pans hardly ever seal. Usually they're not straight. They have like a warp to them. And even though the car is still drivable, I'll probably drive it today. It's leaking a minuscule amount. Um, but we can't have that because whatever drips or seeps it has, it goes right in the exhaust pipe and you can smell it whenever you stop. I'm not down with that. So we'll throw another 50 or 60, 70 bucks at it to get a Febby Bilstein pan. That's what's going on with that. I'm putting the lights up. I did F11 lawnmower too. Um, what I want to do tonight, I'd really like to get the black E39 in here, put those new control arms on it. That car has been doing really well. No issue at all. It makes good power with the Euro 1 tune. That's why I really want to do it to the blue car. Might keep the blue car for a while. I just don't know. I'm not sure. Do I want to keep three cars and title and license three cars? If I keep them all inside, yes. Unfortunately, I can only keep one inside at a time. So we have to consider that. And it's getting to be summer. And those cars sitting outside all summer is not good for them. We'll see how it all works out. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. For like nothing but talk and jibber and jabber. There's more to come on the C39 coming this week. Uh, we'll have some other videos out. <clears throat> also have the Vulture Stabilizer in. I'm going to build that. We might be putting those on the website for sale. If you have not been there, nathansbmwworkshop.com. Put a link in the description. There is a BMW forum. Everything's there. All the software's there. Everything that you possibly need. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you later.